So good morning, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues and friends. I am Dr. Anthony Tio from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Next to me, I have Dr. Shannon Chen. We'll be discussing our new paper on U.S. Gutter Globular Drainage. Uh, so recently, um, our center published a multi-center trial uh, comparing EGBD versus uh, PTC, and in that RCT named DRAC1, uh, we were able to show an improvement in a one-year adverse event, 30-day adverse event, uh, decreased re-intervention, decrease on planned readmission, and even a decrease in the recurrent acute cholecystitis um, for EGBD as compared to PTC. So recently, our center published another study. So Tio, can you give us a summary of that study? So in this study, we compared U.S. gutter gallbladder drainage versus laparoscopic cholecystectomy for acute cholecystitis using a propensity score analysis with a one-year follow-up data. During the study period, we recruited 30 patients in each arm. Um, we matched the patient with age, sex, and age-adjusted Charlton score. In terms of the outcomes, there were no difference in technical and clinical success rates lengths of hospital stay as well as 30 days adverse events. In terms of the longer term data, there were no difference in recurrent bleeding events um, with 10% in each arm and also re-interventions there was no significant difference uh, which were 13.3% versus 10% and also unplanned emissions which were 10% versus 10%. We concluded that the outcomes of uh, US gallbladder drainage uh, for acute cholecystitis were comparable to laparoscopic cholecystectomy with acceptable rates of recurrent acute cholecystitis. Uh, the results of this study support the role of EUS gutter gallbladder drainage as an alternative to laparoscopic cholecystectomy in patients who may or may not be surgically fit to undergo definitive uh, cholecystectomy. So Tio, I understand that in this study, um, you were unable to show any benefits in perioperative outcome uh, when EGBD is compared to lab coli, um, probably due to the small sample size and retrospective in nature. So what do you think is the postulated uh, short-term benefits of uh, EGBD versus lab coli, say for example in a surgical patient? So I think there are many differences uh, in terms of US versus lab coli. Uh, first of all, uh, the U.S. procedure, uh, we can perform it under conscious sedation. Uh, the procedural time is significantly, should be significantly uh, shorter than lab coli. Uh, as a surgeon, we know that laparoscopic cholecystectomy for acute cholecystitis can sometimes be very difficult, take a few hours, or even require conversion. And one of the, one of the most dreaded complications in lab coli is the risk of bowel duct injury. So uh, with the U.S. procedure, in theory, we can avoid all these issues. And also, um, there won't, won't be any skin incision. So in, in theory, the uh, analgesic requirements as well as wound pain should be uh, less. Uh, whether these uh, benefits can, can uh, result in a shorter hospital stay, we we'll probably need a larger sample size study. So Shannon, as a surgeon, what do you think about just removing the gallstones and not removing the gallbladder? Is that enough? Uh, so as a surgeon, the traditional surgical teaching is that it was because of defective gallbladder that the gallstones occurred. So a cholecystectomy is required to cure the patient of the problem. Uh, now that EGBD comes along, um, the gallstone recurrence would be a problem um, in the long term. Um, at least it is a postulated problem. So what do you think about it? So I think uh, recurrence gallstones uh, is expected to be high. Uh, in our previous study, DRAC1 study, uh, the patients were followed for one year. I think uh, almost 50% of the patients would uh, have recurrent stones. But uh, our recurrent acute cholecystitis rate was actually less than 5%. Uh, meaning that even if the stones recurred, uh, I think majority remain asymptomatic. So um, perhaps uh, in these groups of patients, uh, even after EUS got a gallbladder drain and stone removal, perhaps the number of patients with uh, recurrent symptomatic stones re would remain low. Um, how about ursal, ursal diocycolic accident? What do you think? Uh, so recently there was a study published in JAMA Surgery and it compared um, uh, patients who had gastrectomy done uh, and included almost 1,300 patients, uh, randomizing to placebo, um, ursal 300 milligrams and um, ursal 600 milligrams. And the results showed that at one year, patients who were given ursal um, in both the 300 and 600 milligram group showed a significant decrease in the gallstone recurrence. So this may be an option for these patients who had EGBD done and um, gallstone um, to prevent gallstone recurrence. So Tio, what do you think is the next step? So uh, 
I think uh, previously we have already shown that U.S. gallbladder drainage uh, is associated with better outcomes as compared to percutaneous cholecystostomy. And the chocolate trial has shown that in patients who are at high risk for surgery, lab coding is still better than percutaneous cholecystostomy. So the logical next step is of course to compare U.S. gallbladder drainage versus lab coding in surgical candidates. Uh, but in order for U.S. gallbladder drainage to be, to be acceptable, I think we need to have a long-term study observing the results of U.S. gallbladder drainage in surgical candidates, uh, particularly focusing on the rates of recurrent stones and also, uh, most importantly, the number of patients with recurrent symptomatic uh, biliary pathology. Uh, only after this study, uh, if there are favorable outcomes, then we can consider a randomized controlled trial comparing U.S. versus lab coding. Perfect, so we need to wait for our next study. Thank, Thank you. you.